Rivian is one of the most exciting EV startups out there, and they deliver great vehicles. As a new company, at least one new to delivering cars at scale, they are facing issues, and the main one is making their cars profitable. Even with their expensive vehicles, they lose a significant amount for each one sold. That's where their next platform, the R2, comes in. The R2 is their next generation platform that should take everything they've learned with the R1T and R1S, allow them to make a more affordable vehicle, and become profitable on it. Being that it's more affordable as well, it will hit the mass market, and Rivian finally unveiled this vehicle today. Rivian actually unveiled the R2 as well as two other surprise vehicles at this event, so let's get into it, and a special thanks to Exola for sponsoring a portion of this video. Going into this event, Rivian had given us a few sneak peeks. Their CEO, RJ Scaringe, had said this car will sit right around the sweet spot of $48,000. Quote, we think that's a really important sweet spot. To be in that range, to create a viable option for customers that are coming out of combustion-powered vehicles, getting into something very different. They also posted a number of teasers online. We saw that the R2 would have a front end very similar to the R1S, a very similar rear, and overall, with all of these photos, it really showed how much this is going to be a full-out Rivian. We knew going into this it was supposed to be smaller and cheaper, but it's got that boxy design that people love. The day before the event, they posted this one as well, showing just how similar this is to the R1S. In fact, without context, it would be hard to tell them apart in this photo where it's half hidden. Unfortunately for Rivian, a few days before the event, specs leaked online from their website, detailing a $47,500 starting price, range up to 330 miles, 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, 5 seats, and overall measurements for this car. One other great detail is that this car will have NACS at launch, Tesla's connector that is now becoming standard in the US. So you won't need an adapter to charge this at Tesla superchargers. They held this in person, but it was invite only, and then they live streamed starting at 10 AM. So here's everything we now know for sure about the R2. Rivian held the event at their South Coast Theater store in Laguna Beach, and a number of people you've probably heard of were there. The marquee said, now showing, R2 reveal, and inside it was set up like an auditorium with a very small capacity. The event started with some teasers that they had been sharing leading up to this, and then CEO RJ Scaringe took the stage. He took quite some time to review everything that has been going on at Rivian, including the fact that this is a moment that they've been building to for a long time, and everything they do is about keeping the world adventurous forever. They've worked on a lot with the R1S and R1T and have improved a lot of things and improved a lot with those vehicles. Their mobile service is continuing to roll out. And then they brought the R2 out onto the stage. Interestingly, reservations actually opened up for this at the beginning of the event. You were able to reserve this before it was even fully unveiled. So I put a reservation in just in case it's a $100 refundable deposit. They brought the car out and overall it looks quite similar to the R1S, just a lot smaller. Next up today, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Exola. Exola is investing in the future of the metaverse, and their founder, Sharuk Agapatov, is unveiling his new book, Once Upon Tomorrow. In the book, he calls for a decentralized, user-centric, and inclusive metaverse, rather than the closed online ecosystems developed by the likes of Mark Zuckerberg. Agapatov weaves his own personal story into the technical innovations of today, positioning the metaverse as a transformative force in the digital landscape. In his unique perspective on the metaverse, he predicts it will soon not only be bigger than the video game industry, but will become a new marketplace for countless other industries, with huge potential for education, communication, and entertainment as a whole. He goes on to explain how those industries could be revolutionized by replacing their outdated business models with new innovative revenue models. He therefore argues that video game technology and economics are inseparable from the future of the metaverse. This is such an interesting idea to me, considering this has the potential to impact just about every aspect of modern life. He also discusses how Los Angeles will become the epicenter for this new technology rather than Silicon Valley. Agapatov's ideas in this book are not just his vision, but are actual Exola products, such as payments, digital items, and Metasites Plus. Exola is building new infrastructure for the metaverse, and these products are either already fully operational or will be in the very near future. You can dive deeper into all of these topics and much more by clicking the link in the description below to get your copy of Once Upon Tomorrow Now. The future is now. And then one of the first details they unveiled was that we expect R2 deliveries to begin in the first half of 2026. We'll keep you updated as we get closer to production. They called this their next adventure, and really it looks very similar to the R1S. It has four doors, a single hatch trunk as opposed to a split one like the R1S, and then a front trunk. One detail I noticed there is that the front trunk powers up, but that it is manual close. In the rear, there are some pretty cool features there that give it an open air feel. 
the quarter windows pop out, and then the rear window rolls down all the way. This not only gives you an open air feel when driving so that you can have air passing fully through the vehicle, but you can also use this to store larger items like a surfboard. It can be hanging out that rear window that is rolled down. To me, this reminds me quite a bit of some things that we've seen with the Fisker Ocean. It's a two row vehicle that seats five and the second row seats fold flat. But one addition they showed there is that the first row seats fold completely flat as well. This further allows you to store very large cargo because it can be passing through that rear window that is rolled down and then all the way into the front passenger seat. And then it's great for in-vehicle camping since you can be camping all the way from the back of the vehicle up to the steering wheel. They did a side-by-side -side comparison with the R1S and you can really see the differences there. It's 400 millimeters shorter than the R1S and it's lower in height and smaller in just about every way you could imagine. Seeing them driving side-by-side, -side, it's really easy to tell the difference and the R1S looks especially large in this video. Overall, the interior looks very similar to the R1S and R1T. It's a very much Rivian interior, but they have made some upgrades to the steering wheel. This has these really large scroll wheels that he said has dynamic haptic feedback. Overall, there's not a ton that they can demonstrate there without you really trying it yourself, but he said it's a really great control setup, and I'm curious to see this shift over the previous setup that Rivian had with the steering wheel. One complaint he addressed with the R1S and R1T is the lack of a glove box. So for the R2, they went with two separate glove boxes. This may be a bit of overkill, but I guess it's better than the alternative. And we can see clearly with the interior that they are sticking with dual screens. The main center screen appears to be just as large as the R1S, but the instrument cluster display seems like it may be a little bit smaller. Those are most of the design details that they showed of the R2, and overall it just looks to be a great Rivian in a smaller package. But some of the more exciting details, in my opinion, came with how they're actually planning to build this, and then what it's priced at. So first, this is going to be using 4695 battery cells. We've heard a lot about 4680 cells from Tesla, and those are the biggest cells we've seen in an electric vehicle. And 4695s are even larger than those. They're much larger than what the R1S and R1T uses with 2170 cells, and they're also going with a structural battery pack here. This is something that Tesla somewhat introduced to the market with the Model Y, and we're now seeing fully on the Cybertruck in production, and that's how they're going to be bringing down the price of the R2. It's gonna be a structural battery pack using this new cell form factor. They're going to be making three different configurations, but they haven't unveiled specifics of each of those. They just said it will be single motor, dual motor, and then tri-motor. As for performance, the highest trim will be a zero to 60, under three seconds, and RJ himself said it will be well under three seconds. Arguably the most exciting point here is that for all three of those configurations, it will get over 300 miles of range. Single, dual, or tri-motor will be able to get 300 miles of range. Lastly, for hardware, it will have 11 cameras and five radars around, coupled with a higher compute platform that should help them deliver a high level of self-driving. He said that the goal is that you get on the highway, enter self-driving, and you can take your hands off the wheel and even your eyes off the road a little bit, which likely leads to some future ambitions they have for self-driving, similar to Tesla. For the starting price there, $45,000. So the leaked price of this was $47,500 and all the other specs matched. So it almost seems like Rivian maybe saw those leaked specs and decided to undercut it or 45,000 was their plan all along. And one of the higher trims is actually what's going to be coming in at $47,500. In any case, he said you could reserve starting today and people in the audience said we've already reserved one just like I did. But then came that one more thing. He mentioned that R2 is this vehicle that we're seeing here, it's the R2, but it's also a platform, a new platform for Rivian using these new battery cells, using this new structural pack, using everything they've designed here. So then comes its sibling, the R3. This was a complete surprise to everyone at this event and I think everyone in the world because Rivian did a really good job of keeping the R3 completely secretive. They drove this one out and I was personally even more excited to see this one. It's a true smaller crossover EV, something that might even more so take on the Model Y or even cars that are a little bit smaller than that. It has a shorter wheelbase, tighter dimensions overall, and he himself called it a crossover. To me, when viewing this from the side, it looks a lot like what would be a Hyundai crossover SUV, something like the Ionic 5. And that's a very, very popular shape, so this is very exciting to see a vehicle that is this much smaller coming from Rivian. Up front, he mentions the front trunk, but we don't actually see it in action at the event itself. But in back, it's a hatchback trunk, but then it also has what they're calling flipper glass. 
It's a second way to get into the back and it's easy to get things in and out, but it can also carry a surfboard and other things like that loaded through this glass and it closes down on it. So this can be variably adjusted by the user to close down on whatever cargo you're carrying out the back of your Rivian R3. Overall inside, we can see it's very similar to the R2's interior, but in some ways it does have downgrades and that should be what makes this price even lower than the $45,000 starting price of the R2. That was already cool enough, but then he said there's one more thing and they unveiled the R3X. This is a higher performance package of the R3. It comes with a super sporty interior that we can see here that really stands out. And he said at the company, they call this rugged playful. The R3X will come with a tri-motor setup that we already know is possible because this is built off the same platform as the R2, which can have single, dual, and tri-motor. So the R3 is going to have that and bring tons of great performance. The way they're able to meet that R2 deadline of the first half of 2026 for first deliveries is by leveraging their Illinois plant. That is where they make the R1S and the R1T currently. But in the future, they're gonna be making a new factory in Georgia that will help them scale up. So first, the R2 is going to be launching out of their Illinois plant to hopefully actually meet that deadline of the first half of 2026. And then from there, Georgia is gonna be adding capacity to the R2 and also introducing the R3 and R3X. And those were really all of the details we got as far as specs and pricing for these two cars. The R2 is gonna start at $45,000, which is very, very impressive, especially considering he said every spec should get a 300 mile range. As for the R3 though, we don't know a starting price there and we don't even know when this vehicle is coming. It's more of that exciting thing to look forward to in the long future for Rivian. And considering the R2 would be launching in early 2026 and would have to scale up, it's very likely we wouldn't see the R3 until 2027, 2028, or possibly even later. That's a bit disappointing for me because I think that car looks really great, but they're really going for the market of a five-seater SUV right here. And if they can achieve that starting price of $45,000 and actually make this thing profitable with all of the new tech they're introducing, like a structural battery pack, 4695 battery cells and more, that will be huge for Rivian and ultimately what takes them to the next level. Many have called this Rivian's Model 3 moment because the Model 3 was really what took Tesla from a luxury automaker that makes a small number of EVs to the place that they are today making millions every single year. But getting that Model 3 out the door and scaling that up was a really, really difficult process for Tesla. They almost died in the process of that scaling, and we know it was extremely challenging for the company overall. Likely we're going to be seeing the same with Rivian on the R2. There should be certain things that they've learned from Tesla and learned from themselves with the R1S and R1T that they can apply here, and they may have a better head start when it comes to certain things, but they are introducing a lot of new stuff on this car, and they have to make a $45,000 SUV profitable as they're already struggling to make their R1T and R1S profitable. So this is all very exciting and should be a turning point for Rivian, but it's going to be very difficult coming up. One very cool detail to see on the R2 and the R3 is the charge port. It is way smaller than it is on the R1S and R1T, and that's because these vehicles are being introduced with NACS from the get-go. In this photo of the R3, we can see that that charge port is in the back right of the vehicle. My question is why are they not putting it on the back left if they're trying to use Tesla's supercharger network? That seems to be the best position there. And this still adds complexity at a supercharger when you're backing up and you're supposed to use the one on this direction and a Tesla comes next to you and you're supposed to use that same charger. It's going to create some issues and maybe Rivian can change this, but it looks like they've already engineered this so that the back right is the charge port location. I think Rivian did an incredible job at this event and they did a great job at keeping the R3 completely secret. We saw, I think, one or two leaked photos of the R2 leading up to this event and it was blurry and from far away. So they did a tremendous job keeping not only this secret, but the R3 completely secret secret. For me, I'm a little more excited about the R3, but I do recognize that the R2 is the next really important step for Rivian. This is still nearly two years away from seeing first deliveries, so that is quite a long time to wait for this vehicle, but I'm glad to see Rivian finally unveiling what the future holds for them beyond their big vehicles. What were your thoughts on this event though? Was it exciting for you and were you excited to see the R3? Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, if you want to check out the latest Tesla news, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.